Firestone and Dave Dunn are going to give us a. They're going to give us everything that's going to happen for the season, including prices, right? Oh, and if you guys can come up here, it'd be great. So, you guys want to start out just giving an introduction of who you are? Sure, thanks, Tom. Everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. I appreciate you staying. I felt like we're, after all the big news, we're late night with David Letterman here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Stan Farstone. Uh, we're a 100-year-old company. Uh, we've been, been processing uh, since uh, the 80s. Um, most of our markets are retail, international, and uh, domestic. Um, it was interesting on the, the SWD. I, I think it plays a factor in, if you look at blackberries, the many blackberries coming from South America or or just pick wild. And, uh, Stan, why don't you hold the mic yeah. a little closer? Okay. Yeah. Um, so that that being the case, if they have that situation of SWD, that would greatly affect the amount of blackers that, that come out of South America. Um, what we're seeing on both markets of raspberry and blackberry is strong for 2014. On the IQF side, and Dave's going to touch more on, on that side of IQF. But uh, we're working hard on opening additional markets in Asia. Uh, right now, Korea does not accept BlackBerry. We're trying to open that up. Um, the the raspberry side, if you if you look at um, you know, the the amount of plants that have been purchased, the the acres of raspberry continue to decline, and I know it's difficult uh, with rib rots, uh, but if you can get plantings of raspberry, we feel that will be strong for, for years to come. I also wanted to touch base on the aspect of you know, the fruit is in, frozen fruit is in, the category is increasing. The, um, aspect of product of USA that's increasing we went through a time of, that we, we all have this competition of uh, no, the, the Chileans are just shoving the market down and, uh, and we're seeing that uh, many markets that we're, we are aiming at is that um, we're not necessarily getting the, um, the aspect of that it's, yes it's a world market but um, the aspect of Product of USA is, is increasing, increasing demand for that. But just Chileans have trouble um, with in the aspect of with the new food safety regulations. They have a little trouble with traceability. There's still many raspberries harvested from many many different growers. Someone will drive around and pick up some at many different locations. Traceability is very difficult. So if we can all concentrate on gap certification, I know we, we all feel like we continuously ask for more and more and more, but um, that puts us um, a step above um, and uh, opens and, and keeps uh, markets. Dave, I'll turn over to you. Okay, I'm Dave Dunn with Wyoming Valley Fruit. Stan had me a little bit worried here because he didn't show up here until just a little bit ago, but we were up at the Frozen Food show in San Diego this week, and Stan won a brand new set of uh, tailor-made golf clubs, so I thought for sure he was out there. <laughs> We were both uh, meeting with customers along with Rain Suite too, so, which by the way, Linda just came from the airport to here, so that shows some dedication. <laughs> but yeah, just to, to echo a little bit off of what Stan's saying, um, what we're hearing, or what I, you know, our company's hearing is quality, quality, quality. And that started three or four years ago. The industry's kind of moved back towards more IQF, and uh, there's huge opportunity for everybody in this room 
but we've got to continue to work on the quality of, of, of high IQF product. That's really where the big thrust is today, and so whatever we can do to meet those requirements, that we've got a, a great opportunity, um, like Stan said, specifically in markets we've never taken the product into to speak of, but, but it's competitive out there on the quality end of things. So, um, talking a little bit more about markets on the Puree side, it's a strong market, but I do think that that market will be probably one of the ones that could fill up and uh, probably see, um, you know, maybe a, I'm not going to say this year that that market's going to soften, but I think that's another reason why quality is really important to get as much fruit into that category and to continue to maintain a quality Puree product. And, and I think it's a misnomer to say that Puree is not good fruit. Um, I think there was something mentioned earlier about the Puree market's going to have a lot if the SWD doesn't get under control. Um, the Puree guys don't want SWD, and there will be a point where SWD won't be able to go into those markets. And so it's really important to not think that that insect is going to be necessarily have a home there. Um, so that's why we appreciate all the efforts in trying to work on that. So, touch a little bit on food safety that Stan talked about too. I see that rep really changing quickly from not only food safety but conservation efforts. We're seeing our customers say, "What's your program to try to conserve water and spray and chemicals? And what are your growers doing? And what are you doing to?" You know, protect the environment. Those are all marketability things that our companies are being asked, you know, to participate in. And the people who can who can show that are, are going to be in the forefront of moving their product. So, you know, that and, and you guys really are in that anyway. Nobody wants to use anything more than they need to because it's costly. So what we have to do is continue to understand that and how do we show that. How do we showcase that we're not wasting those resources and that we do care about the environment and all those other things, all the way to how workers are treated and all that. It's like we've already got a labor shortage, so I'm pretty sure we're not mistreating our workers too terribly bad or, or uh, we wouldn't have them at all. So, um, so that's moving, you know, with like the microorganism issues and walk, you know, clean water and all those food safety, but it's kind of almost ramped up to a more than just food safety. So, and the last thing I had was just basically um, market. When you talk about markets and marketability, what are you doing on your farm to market your farm? What are you doing to for us to move your product? Why? Do we want your product? And there's some a um, little bit of a new thinking process in the growers who are or who understand that I have to market my crop and I have choices of where I'm going to take it. Who do I align my farm with? What do I have that I can go to those people and say, "Here's what I got to offer you. Here's my SWD program. Here's my how I uh, save water, or, or uh, here's what I do for food safety." Um, and so, you know, you need to market your farm and align yourself with processors who you feel the most comfortable with that share in some of the things that that you have. Because each processor has a little bit of a different a different feel. Um, so you need to find which one of those do you think meet the goals that's going to be for your operation. Which one of those are are you going to be aligned with so that long term you have a great place to take your fruit where you're going to get the best treatment and get taken care of. And I ran across this this weekend at one of our meetings. This is actually from Stolbush Island Farms, who they are probably one of the most creative marketing companies that we've got in Oregon. But they um, uh, created this coloring book, and it's going out into the school programs to all the schools. And they're um, promoting and working really hard on colors. So this is a coloring book for kids, but what it is is they want them to see all the various colors in food. 
the reds and the blacks and the greens and everybody uh, eats with their eyes and so they're trying to educate the young kids to be healthy to use our product and so that, that's just one example of, of things that that, that specific company is doing has kind of been on the forefront in a lot of areas but I think each one of our companies has promotional things we're trying to do to move your fruit and to, and to create a healthy environment, which is what makes a strong industry. And so I just challenge you to go, where, where are those people? What, we're asking you to give us this, this, and this. Where, what are you coming back to us with and say, well, I'd like to take fruit to you, but show me what you're doing here. What are you doing in your community? What are you doing in, with your companies? How are you promoting kids? How are you being active and responsible in what you're doing? And so that's how we build a really strong industry. And I think we're doing quite well with our category line right now. So we've got a great opportunity to capture that. And the markets are there. I and mean, I think we both agree and several others, the opportunity's there. So we have to continue to educate ourselves and each other about how we grab that, get a hold of it, and keep it. So. Any, any uh, questions? No, I've got a few. Jim. Um, well, I, I'd like to, what's your concern about the public perception of how much extra spray application we have to do to meet the industry requirements of almost zero on what we're bringing in? I mean, it seems like IPM is the, we're all trying to do is basically out the window in that particular area. Are you concerned about that a lot? Or, because it is a matter of time before everybody figures out what we have to do. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's where... I, mean, it, it, I didn't ask if you had concern, because I know you do. <laughs> how, how big a deal is it? Is it going to be a train wreck here pretty soon? Or? Well, I think that's why it's critical that we do kill the fly because then it's not a big news story. But when it starts getting into the product, and as an industry, we've done a pretty good job, I think, of learning how to deal and treat the product and keep it somewhat low profile. Um, so that's the first key. If we don't have the issue, then it doesn't hit the press quite as bad. But I'm obviously concerned, like you are, we don't know the long-term effect of the amount of product we need to use on the plants and on the health of the soil and all those other things you know, factors that come into it. And if someone wants to put a big spotlight on that whole thing, it, it's not going to be good, so. And on the same line, like MRL uh, levels, I mean, from that perspective too, you know, you like guys have markets towards and, and reaching certain MRLs. Are you seeing that kind of maxed out at this point, or? You do, actually, yes. Um, Stand, could you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. On the MRLs and, and now the, the continuous treatment for the uh, SWDs, yes, it's a big concern and, and you really have to be careful. That, that came up this year where the application started earlier and continued through the whole season that if you were spraying the same chemical three, four, five, six times, you were going to maximize on the MRLs. And, uh, so, you know, those, those international markets are important um, and they continue to grow. But yes, we need to do everything possible to make sure we stay within the, the MRL levels. You guys test uh, the fruit for MRL's uh, status as it comes into your plant or moves out, whichever way you look at it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and unfortunately, Fortunately, unfortunately, uh, the, the companies in this room, this the frozen food category, for, frozen fruit category is, is is growing and becoming very important in the retail chains. IQF raspberries last year, growing price, it was way up. <laughs> <laughs> dollar dollar twenty five to dollar forty, depending on where you were at. It's kind of like black raspberries down here, buddy. So far, we need Yeah. I might just add, oh, what do we need to, I mean, 
just because Dan or I come up here and tell you what you need, what, what you need is what who you want to sell to needs. Because um, too many people just start planning, and that's not really in the benefit of any of us. You need to know when you're going to sell and market something, what do they want, and are they going to take what you're going to put in the ground? So, I mean, you can't get a cell phone without a contract, um, but yet today, you know, some people don't want to put anything in writing, and that's from a grower and from a processor either way. But, but that, you know, I just caution you to say, don't look at what someone else is doing. Look at who you want to sell to, and find out what they want, and and work with them. So, yeah, that's a great point, David. And we actually uh, try to put the whole team together and. and in the aspect of, of the market and the long-term market, uh, having the infrastructure in place uh, to to process that product, and then also on the production side, it's and we share it all the way across. Um, in that every aspect is important, um, but as Dave Dave mentioned, uh, work with someone that that has a market for the product. Talk with them about it, where it's going. You know, is is that processor just looking for something um, for the immediate that it, it, it's short, plant this for us? Uh, but a few years in, um, you know, their market would be undercut by uh, Serbia or Chile or wherever it would come cheaper. Uh, work work with someone that will put the whole program together. That you feel secure in your in your investment, and, um, and that they've put in the investment to handle your product and have the market there for for your product for for the the long term. Any other burning questions? If not, I think Brian or or Dad should say explain the chart a little bit behind you. Let's give these guys a hand.